Are you feeling overwhelmed trying to navigate the world of online entrepreneurship? Are you a female entrepreneur, coach, consultant, or service-based professional struggling to turn your dreams into a sustainable reality? Are you tired of the endless to-do lists, sleepless nights for fear of things slipping through the cracks and worrying about the next client? If this is you, and you're ready to transform your business into a thriving, sustainable, and vibrant venture that you love, then listen up. I'm Aldrina Harper, business and podcast launch strategist, declutter coach, and the host of the Organized Entrepreneur Podcast. As a professional organizer in the business for more than 20 years, I've been there, and so I get it. But by listening and subscribing to this podcast, what you'll discover are ways to get organized, implement systems to help you free up your time and energy so that you can focus on things that matter. And here's the cool part. You'll even discover how you can leverage the power of podcasts to attract top-notch leads straight into your virtual doorstep so that your pipeline pops with opportunities. It's time to say goodbye to chaos and confusion and hello to clarity, confidence, and certainty in your dream business. Are you ready? Let's go. Um, I, I do have a question for you all before we get into our topic. Since I told you the topic is uh, community. How many of you are already a part of some type of community, whether it's a prayer group, church, business, or maybe it's something that's based on a product or a service you purchased or what have you, a Facebook group, right? We're all a part of some type of community. And if you haven't noticed, you know, like Facebook and all of the other social media platforms, their focus is more on community, right? And the thing about it is, it's not just a group of individuals, right? It Community shapes our lives. It shapes our destinies. It helps us uh, be uplifted, right? During challenging times, if we're in the right communities, right? Um, and, and they also create a lasting impact. It's a vital, vital part of our existence, right? And so... Um, today we're going to be, we're going to explore a little bit more about the power of community because at its core, a community, according to, uh, it's, it's about connections, right? But according to Pew Research Center, 79% of adults in the United States feel that they belong to a community where they can connect with others who share their values and their interests. And that has been one of the goals of our networking community. Our networking event is to, to provide a sense of belonging, right? And we really do hope you feel the vibe, okay? Um, community also provides a support system in times of adversity, right? Uh, it helps you to be more resilient, gives you that comeback power, right? When you got the right community around you, right? Uh, according to the Journal of Community Psychology, individuals with a strong community tie experience increased psychological well-being and are better equipped to face life's challenges, right? It shapes our experiences. Community empowers us to achieve greater heights it provides the support and encouragement that we all need in our journeys. I found a um, an African uh, proverb that said, if you want to go fast, go alone. I'm mean, sorry. Yeah. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. I thought that was so, so powerful. So today I actually invited a friend of mine to join me uh, today, Stacy. Uh, I'll give a little bit of an introduction. I'll let her introduce herself, but I asked her to come and talk a little bit about community today because not only does she manage um, an 
uh, online community, a solopreneur online community. She also has been very instrumental in managing an offline community for maybe what over 20 something years. So she'll, you know, share a little bit more about that. But I asked she... about how many communities they're in. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh I think she knows a little bit about community. So I asked her to join me today because uh when I first thought of this topic, I was like, I think I need her to come in and talk a little bit about the importance, you know, of community. So I'll ask her some questions, but before I uh start asking her some questions, I want her to come. And uh, just go ahead and unmute yourself. Well, you're already unmuted, but just share a little bit about who you are, what you do, and then we'll move on. Well, thank you first for having me. Aldrima and I have some good conversations. And I will tell you, I, I will try and talk slowly. When I get excited, I talk fast. And I giggle a lot when I get excited. So <laughs> if you hear me giggling... That's what it's, it's all okay. about. It's okay. Um, I, I do work full time. I've been with my company for 29 years. I've done several different things. My main career was asset management for shopping centers. We're winding that down. I know I only look 32. I don't know how I could be at my company for 29 years, but that happened. That happened this year. And so in winding all of that down, my boss asked me to stay on. We're doing some software development, which I can get into in the community section in a little bit. But in the meantime, he's been a fantastic mentor. And I am also a female solopreneur, a woman uh, entrepreneur, and I'm starting my own side business, which has been crazy and developing communities for that. So I've just got a lot going on like this. But one thing I just love. I love to talk to people. I love to connect people. And, you know, a lot of people have pros and cons on what COVID did to us. And I find one of the major pros with COVID was community development. And we can be engaged with a lot more people in meaningful ways, even though some people might not like this setting, we're all getting used to it. And before COVID, you know, I was in a running group or I tried to meet with my adoption or an adoptive family, my adoption group. Post COVID now, so many communities and so much growth and connection. I just find it phenomenal. And if you can embrace this type of a setting to make deep connections is just really amazing. Um, faith-based communities, you know, it, it, it takes a village to raise a child. That's my belief with the adoption community. So that's kind of where I'm at, work full-time, solopreneur. I build communities. I belong to communities. Um, yeah. I mean, any questions, you let me know. I can get you the answer. <laughs> that's my motto. If I don't know it, I'll find it for you. <laughs> she, I, I tell you, she's being very, very modest. She managed modest. She manages a community. I'm a part of her community and she's also been a part of my community, my decluttering community. Um, and so, uh, but we met, I think I saw maybe an advertisement or something for solopreneurs and I joined uh, but uh, yeah, and so she's being very, very modest. She does a phenomenal job of managing the community. And so, uh, but yeah, so thank you so much, Stacey. So a, a few questions before we, you know, we, we'll, so we'll move on. Um, why do you think community is so important? Why do you think it's so important? Well, I can tell you, I... We need to, everybody talks about they take personality tests and, and I highly suggest everyone take a personality test if you're going to be a part of a community because just like in a family, everybody adds something different to a community. Everybody adds something different to a family. I am actually, contrary to what you might see on the screen, I'm actually an introvert. I'm a social introvert. So I, and I'm an empath, I'm a huge empath. So there's certain things I can add to a community that maybe somebody who is a, a very high extrovert would add something different. So if you would take a, a personality test, I think it's the Myers-Briggs, or I might say that backwards, Briggs-Meyer, um, that would really help you identify what you could add to a community. 
Because just like in a family or just like in your neighborhood or your church or wherever you go, everybody has something of value to add. And it's it makes the community so well-rounded. And you can mentor and you can grow at the same time. So if you can do that, you can add to a community. It, it helps you, you know, no man is an island. It helps you be a part of something. My kids, I'll tell you very quickly, I've always taught my kids, think globally. One of my children is in the military, is overseas regularly, producing global effort, which I'm so proud of. My other child, they're 10 and a half years apart. I tell her, think globally. She's shooting for the FBI. My philosophy for me is I make my little corner of the world better whether it's my office, my church, my neighborhood. So there's always a place for you and you can always add value and feel connected to other people. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I totally agree. I totally agree. Um, and a lot of times, you know, you find people joining communities just so that they can get something. <laughs> but I love how you, you know, how you put that, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, giving value, you know, to people and, and uh, community does allow you to do that. So in your experience, what are some of the main challenges that you have found being the manager of a solopreneur community? What are some of the challenges that you have found uh, that solopreneurs face? So the reason I asked how many communities, and I'm not going to pick on anybody because I will tell you, I saw the six plus, I will tell you, honestly, on Facebook, I am a part of 34 communities. Now, <laughs> having said that, think, think pre-COVID, how many communities in person did you belong to? So I had my running group, which I went to one, two, three times a week. My church group, one, two, three times a week. <laughs> um, I got to my adoption group maybe once a month. So when you think of the number of communities and you think of the quality of the communities, you try and think back pre-COVID, how, how much can I really engage in 34 communities? I can't. My top communities are probably four. That's what I can fit in on a regular basis. So part of the struggle with a community is managing people that join, but they're not really engaged. So you have to try and think about what, you're, what you want out of that community, what you can give to that community. And when I'm managing it, I have to balance that. And it's constantly trying to stay in touch with people to make sure that they're engaged and we don't just have I tell you, a, a community that I'm in that I I seek information from, they have 5,000 members. I regularly go to their weekly meeting. They have three people show up out of 5,000, maybe four, but I've not really seen more than three or four. So that's difficult to manage when the, you people are joining community, but they're not engaged. So you have to keep on top of your connections Aldrima and I, I mean, like if we live next door to each other, we would be best friends. <laughs> like seriously, you mentor those connections, you nurture them, you foster them. And so my community that I manage, Lifestar, we have about 210 members, which doesn't really seem like a lot, but the members that we have that are engaged is, is solid. And I know those people intimately as if, if I'm going to sit around a fire pit with them, you don't want to really be in a community that you're not going to engage in. Otherwise, why why be in it? And it's in it frustrating. It's frustrating for the manager to figure out, try and figure out why you're there. So I'm constantly DMing people. I'm constantly asking, what can I do for you? What are you looking for? And creating a relationship to make sure the people that I am are in there, I'm giving them what they need. They're getting quality and we're having engaged members. Yeah, yeah, I, I would imagine that that can be, you know, pretty tough. I mean, I, you know, I kind of got your beat on the, uh, the different communities that I'm a part of. 
No. <laughs> Yeah, we're twins. And, and, and but the thing is, uh, uh, quite a few of them are based on maybe a software or something that I purchased. And so right. I'm a part of that community. Um, and, you know, if anybody, you know, knows me, they know that, you know, I love technology and gadgets and software and all that kind of stuff. So that has been...